This is the Elgu Jupiter build plate and I bought my Elgu Jupiter on Kickstarter and received it in September of 2022. Spoiler alert, I have not even turned it on yet. Today, we're gonna get one step closer because I'm gonna add this Wham Bam flexible build system to the build plate so I can get my prints off super easy. My name's Jim and this is The Edge of Tech. So I know many of you are screaming at your screen right now because I've had this thing for months and not even turned it on. That's because I was waiting to put on this flexible build system and I just have not had time to make this video and get it on the printer. That all changes today. I got this Wham Bam flexible build system at Earth back in October of 2022 and it is now April 2023 and I'm finally going to use it. We're just going to jump right into installing it. It's super easy. Let's do it. The first thing we're going to do is pop this box open. Once we get it open, everything is nicely flat packed inside and we're just going to slide it out like that. It's nicely wrapped. We're just going to cut all of that wrap off real quick. This is some packing material. We're just going to throw that aside and oh, pull that off as well. Now your whole flex plate actually sits inside of this. So you can see it was very well packed inside of all of this cardboard and shipped flat. When we open up the box, we find everything else inside. Let me just make sure we're good. That includes our magnet, which is on the back here. Our flex plate, which is huge. I can't believe how big this surface is. I'm so excited to print with this printer, but this magnet, is, is super thick. Ugh, there we go. Check that out. So it says Wham Bam XTR. I'm not sure if we can get that, but it is a thick, thick magnet. And this thing is gonna hold on super good onto that build plate. This is your build surface. I do believe it's uh, reversible. I think you can use either side if I remember right. And it is actually a really thick sheet as well. Also in the package, you get some sandpaper, a couple different grits. Let me pull that off. There we go. It looks like you get uh, 220 and 400 grit sandpaper because we need to scuff up our build plate. We also get uh, a thank you and some instructions. It goes through everything you need to know. And of course, stickers. I have my brand new build plate. The plastic is still on it. So I'm actually going to uh, peel that for you. Oh geez, now we got stuck. There we go. <laughs> now we wanna take some 90% isopropyl alcohol. If you can't find 90 or above, I'm using 99% here then you wanna use like pure acetone, but it needs to be at least 90% isopropyl alcohol to do the cleaning. We're just going to uh, spray it on. I'm gonna let it sit just for a second here. I'm gonna grab the handle on the back here and just give it a good wipe down. We wanna make sure all the factory oil is off of the plate. We wanna make sure this plate is super clean because if it's not super clean, that magnet, that 3M adhesive that Wham Bam uses, that super strong 3M adhesive is not gonna stick. Now, if you have a uh, microfiber, that would be better than this paper towel I'm using uh, because it won't leave little fibers behind. I'm actually gonna do it a second time, just a quick coat and wipe it off again. Now I'm gonna let that dry. Now grab that 220 grit sandpaper that came in the kit and we're gonna sand everything on here just so it's nice and scuffed up. It does not have to look pretty, it just needs to be scuffed up. Now that we're pretty dang scuffed up, you can see it's kind of all scratched up there, which is perfect. We need to clean the plate really, really well. So spray on your isopropyl alcohol, let it sit for a couple seconds here. Grab yourself a paper towel or a microfi microfiber, microfiber, <laughs> microfiber cloth and just start cleaning the heck you can see how much is gonna come off there. And we need to clean it until nothing comes off. So we're gonna do that. You can still see I'm getting quite a bit. I'm gonna spray it again. You might have to do this uh, two to three to four times. 
I'm gonna grab another paper towel, a clean paper towel here, and just keep doing that until it comes off clean. All right, we're getting there. All right, finally, after four wipes, it came out pretty dang clean. So that we're gonna keep, and I'm just gonna let this dry off. At this point, you need to look at your build plate and just make sure there is no area that has not been scuffed up yet. It looks pretty good on my side. I went up and down, sideways, all around, and it looks pretty scuffed up. The next step is to grab your new build plate, whichever model you have. This is pretty much universal for all their models on how you apply these. And just make sure it fits the plate. Make sure you've got the right size. In my case, we're good. It fits the plate very nicely. And we can proceed to the next step. So what we want to do is come in the back and just peel off um, maybe like that much and fold your paper. Then we want to hold that in the back with your finger and you want to align the sheet so it's perfect on here. You want to make sure this is dead center because remember, this has to go down into the vat. And if this is not center, it's not going to go in your vat. So make sure you're good and placed. And in my case, I'm doing this upright, which is probably not the best way to do that. Let me put it down a little bit like that. Perfect. So once you have it placed, I got my finger right here is where that adhesive is sticking. I'm actually going to reach back, grab that paper, and pull some back. Now, with your finger and your hands, you're just going to start slowly pressing that down, making sure you're straight, making sure you're square, because if this is off, it's not going to go in your vat very well. So you definitely need to make sure this is straight before you go any further. I notice I'm a little bit off here, so I'm going to have to adjust right now before we go any further. I'm just going to push it down just a little bit like that. If I have to peel it back just a hair and then push it down and hold it, there we go. So I know we're, we're good there. Um, it is much easier if you can set your, your plate straight on the table. Then all you have to do is start pulling your paper out. And again, make sure you're straight. Make sure you're straight on there like that. Pushing it down, making sure it's flat, and just making sure that adhesive is sticking. Now your paper is way out here, and you can slowly pull it out like that. So if it's off a little bit, you can still push it down a little and hold it while you're pushing it in, like that. And you can still slowly pull your paper out, like this. Once you get it all out, there you go. So now all you want to do is take a couple minutes here, make sure you're pressing it down, make sure you're going over. It's super thick, so it's hard to see if there's any bubbles. So just take a few minutes and make sure you're pressing this down very good. Make sure it's very, very stuck down to this plate. The next step is literally the hardest step in installing this. And that is once you have it pressed down, it's tight, it's in its spot, it's not moving, you have to let it sit for 72 hours. That's right, 72 hours. Let this thing cure. Let it dry, let the, the, the glue adhesive, or let the adhesive stick, whatever it's called, for 72 hours. That way there's no pressure on this thing to pull that magnet out. So it's been 72 hours and we've been letting this thing sit and dry. And now it's time to put our plate on for the first time. So I would normally just clean both sides of this and grab some paper towel and wipe it down uh, before you use it. So I am not over where my printer is currently. So I'm not going to wipe it down, uh, especially on the back side. It's not a big deal yet. But before I use this for the first time, wipe it all down with your isopropyl alcohol again. Take your plate and just let it snap on. Make sure it's straight on here. Obviously, I just kind of threw it on. But that's it. Then when you're done, it'll pop off like that. And that's how it works. It literally just pops on like that. All right, that's it. It was super easy and this thing probably only would take about five minutes to do. Uh, it is crazy easy to apply. Just be careful. Make sure you center everything very nicely. If you accidentally have the magnet like hanging off a little bit on one side or the other, you can always take a razor. Uh, so if you have a razor, grab a razor like this, make it long and just kind of trim down the edge of your build plate. That'll trim off the magnet. It's super easy to cut and that'll flush out the magnet around your build plate. 
I tell you what, we saw a piece of 400 grit sandpaper earlier in the video, and you may have noticed we didn't use it. Well, what it's for is if you're having issues getting things off of this build plate, you can actually lightly scuff up your build plate if you want to, or if you have to chisel something that won't come off with a spatula or a razor blade or something like that, and this, it kind of like scratches your build plate, you can fix that by going over it with the 400 grit sandpaper and just making sure it's all nice and smooth again. Uh, sometimes you accidentally will gouge it with a metal spatula. Be very careful, you don't want to do that. But if you do, you always have the 400 grit sandpaper and that's what it's for. The next thing we need to talk about is putting this thing back on your resin printer. Make sure that it fits and there's enough play in the build area. You may have to raise your Z height just a little bit. I believe in here for this particular one, they say it is uh, 3.8 millimeters. So you may have to raise your Z by 3.8 millimeters just to be safe. Uh, some of these have enough play where they sit up in there. They have enough play when you're leveling the bed that you don't have to change the Z height, but it's always safe to check. So in the description below, I'm gonna put a link. You can go find your printer and see if you need that Z spacer or you can get away with not using one. Then re-level everything on your printer and make sure this is flat to your vat. So level this just like you would if it wasn't on there and make sure you're all good before you print anything. Something I should note before you level, you probably should put this on and then put your vat in empty, make sure it's empty and lower this slowly in and just make sure that it sits inside of your vat straight. It's not hitting anything and it looks like it's gonna be okay and it's pretty centered inside your vat and then move on to your leveling sequence. Some people level with the vat, some people level without the vat. However you do it, move on to that now. Just a couple other general notes. Uh, when you're using these things, they are amazing, just like a flex plate on an FDM printer. When you're done, you'll pop it off. And many times, if you have a large part, it will probably just fall right off because of the flex of the plate, which is great. If you have small parts though, they may not get enough flex on this plate to actually pop off just like regular flex plates. So you may need that spatula just to kind of nudge it and, and make it fall off that way. You can wash things on this plate, that is okay, but do not cure anything on this plate. Don't cure uh, anything near this plate. Um, just wanna make sure this is kept clean. So you can always wash it on the plate, although I like to take my stuff off the plates and then wash it. But uh, like I said, don't cure on the plate. When you're done with that, give this thing a really good wipe down with isopropyl alcohol. Make sure it's very clean. And then wipe down your magnet again with isopropyl alcohol and make sure that's very clean. Pop this thing back on like that. Well, straight, not like that. <laughs> and then you're ready to print again. Something to note, there is a version of this that comes with two of these plates. So you can pop this thing off, wipe your magnet down and pop a new one on and get printing immediately if you wanna do that. Uh, that's a pretty cool system too. Like I said, it's all the same. It just comes with two flex plates. And I did mention earlier in the video that this is the XTR version. That is the strongest magnet that Wham Bam makes. It is a super thick magnet, very, very strong. And something like the Jupiter is probably gonna need that because of the force that this thing pulls up from. From what I understand, you probably want the strong magnet when printing on the Jupiter, but they do sell a lighter magnet version of this, a regular version of this. I think the difference is like 20 bucks right around there, give or take. There'll be links in the description below for the Wham Bam Flex system for the Jupiter and for all other resin printers. Almost all of them are out there. They don't have them all, but almost. You can check out which ones right on your site, just click that link in the description below. So thank you again for, for giving this to me at Earth, and I can't wait to start using it. Thank you so much for watching this video on how to add the Wham Bam Flexible Build System to the Jupiter build plate. Remember, this pretty much goes across all of their flexible build plates with the resin printers, so you can use this on pretty much any of those. If you wanna check out another cool product for your resin printers, check this video out right here. Good enough. Boom, boom shaka laka.